2025 was a roller coaster for many people in audio software. And while generative AI has taken up most of the headlines, I've seen some deeper shifts that are giving signs towards how I feel our industry is evolving. We're seeing more products than ever, hiring is changing, and even though our industry has its challenges, I'm seeing innovation all around that makes me excited about where the future is heading. Today, I'm going to break this down into three observations from 2025, three predictions for where I feel we're heading, and what all of this means for you, whether you're a developer, a founder, or a creator. Before we start, my name is Josh and I'm the founder of The Audio Programmer. For the past eight years, we've been helping others to learn, hire, and create with our community, recruitment, and development services. Be sure to give us a like and subscribe to the channel if you find this video insightful. You can also join our community and find out more about us on our website, theaudioprogrammer.com. Also, I just want to point out that these are my observations and I'd love to hear yours. Drop me a comment and share your thoughts on what you're seeing. The first observation that I'm hearing through conversations with developers, plugin companies, people I talk to at conferences and our community is that it's been a challenging year for audio software. Many companies are struggling to generate overwhelming positive momentum during product launches. My social feed has also been filled with product discounts and companies desperate to shift units. And I see many talented developers and professionals trying to find opportunities or at least some type of foothold in this changing market. With all of this being said, we're still far from a collapse. There are several big flagships that are doing well. We've seen groundbreaking products like Serum 2 and Omnisphere 3 that have dropped this year with an amazing response. I'm also personally inspired by what's happening on the indie scene. Baby Audio's Techno is an inspiring drum synth. Spawn by Software uses ethically trained AI to generate MIDI. Lunacy Audio's Beam 2.0 turns effect processing on its head with some really next level visuals. Safari Pedals combines innovation with a great connection to their customer base. The common thread among these is that none of them are trying to be everyone. They're opinionated, weird in some ways, and carving out their own space. Plus, advancements in AI have made it easier than ever to create a generic product. We will certainly see a flood in the coming years of forgettable, AI-generated, unremarkable products from people trying to make a quick buck. So my first observation for this year is that the generic middle is extremely crowded, and the best opportunities lie in innovation on the edges with products that have their own personality. My second observation is how we saw audio software take a turn that almost no one expected. Steinberg's VST3 SDK moved to an MIT license and their ASIO SDK moved to GPLv3. More on that in a separate video linked above. Juice has committed to supporting the open source plugin format CLAP on their roadmap for Juice 9 and already have released a developer branch for MIDI 2.0. And we're starting to see a move towards DAW project interoperability with DAW project from Rowex with adoption by Cubase, Bitwig, and Studio One. To me, these aren't isolated events and they signal a broader shift. The plumbing of our audio developer world is becoming more open, more interoperable, and more accessible. This opens doors for indie development, education, experimental projects, cross DAW workflows, and more. And here's the bigger picture of what I'm seeing. When the foundational tools become more open and interoperable, competition shifts. You're no longer competing on access to technology. You're competing on what you do with it. To me, this is one of the healthiest trends the industry has seen in years. My third observation is that we've seen a significant shift of DAWs towards more collaborative ecosystems rather than just tools for audio creation and editing. Ableton brought Splice directly into Live 12.3. Avid and Universal Audio bundled more third-party plugins into their respective DAWs, and FL Studio released Gopher, an AI assistant built right into their DAW. These aren't just convenience updates. These are larger ecosystem plays. DAWs are becoming environments, not just editors. Places where you can create, collaborate, learn, use bundled tools, and stay inside the garden longer. Now on the surface, this might seem like the opposite of the open source trend I just mentioned. On one side, you're seeing open standards gaining traction, and on the other, Music tech companies are collaborating to build larger, more sprawling applications to meet customer demands and maintain their positions as industry leaders. But I think there's a common thread, which is connection, whether that's connecting tools through open source protocols or connecting users to integrated experiences. So open standards allow developers to get started more quickly, while established companies can use their user base and influence to build creative environments that can't be supported without a very large team. 
Now let's talk about three predictions for 2026 and beyond. 2025 was the year of AI assistants that knew the manual. 2026 will be the year that assistants know your project. Think about these possibilities. Balance these levels in context. Quantize this, but keep the feel of the original track. Suggest harmonies that fit the mood of this particular section. Explain what's causing clipping on track 14. This is not replacing creativity, but it's enhancing the workflow. We saw the beginnings of AI integrations into DAWs in 2025. Stem separation went from third-party tool to standard DAW feature across FL Studio, Logic Pro, Cubase 15, and Ableton Live. That's AI delivering real value to working musicians. Not hypothetically, but right now. The next step is assistants that don't just execute commands, but understand context. FL Studio was the first move in this. My instinct is that all DAWs want this right now. The challenge to this is that most household names run on legacy code bases that are 15 years and older. As code bases get older, they get more challenging to update, and it takes significant time for some companies to add these types of features into their systems. Another way I can see this playing out is for DAW manufacturers to give wider access to their underlying API. So outside LLM, such as ChatGPT and Claude can have more control. This would take the weight of model creation off the manufacturer while giving users more creative possibilities. Very curious to see how this plays out. I'm also predicting that generative AI will make its way into the DAW in 2026 as well. In fact, right as I'm recording this video, I saw on my feed that Eleven Labs have formed a collaboration with ImageLine to bring AI generation directly into FL Studio. This is just the start of some very large alignments that I'm expecting to see next year. My second prediction is for the developers. We've already seen some adoption of off-the-wall diversification in how plugins are created, and I think this is going to go even further next year. The days of juice for both audio processing and the user interface, all done in C++, are not disappearing, but also no longer universal. We're entering a true multi-stack era where teams mix and match technologies. And here are just a few of the things that I've seen this year. People targeting Clap as the main plugin format, then wrapping this into the other formats. I've also seen several plugins using the open source iPlug2 framework. C Major, Rainbow from Cycling74. These are new creative tools that I see using more and more. I've also seen Rust used for several DSP pipelines. Web-based UIs, of course, HTML, CSS, Canvas, Svelte, React. Hybrid architectures using C++ for the audio, then WebView for the UI. I've also seen Blender creating animations for UIs, shaders and GPU accelerated UI pipelines, Wasm for browser native audio tools starting to come into play. Some people are even using the GPU audio SDK and experimenting with that path. And for some inspiration, have a look at the plugin Enukari. That's on a whole other level. Check out my interview with Evan Mazeski for more on that. And I've even seen complete hand-rolled C++ solutions without any frameworks at all. Big shout out to Angus Hewitt. And on the coding side, AI has fundamentally changed how most developers work. GitHub Copilot, AI Assistance in Seamline, VS Code, Cursor, Autocomplete that actually tries to understand your code base. There's even the hated vibe coding now, using AI to rapidly prototype your ideas. I've seen people without any experience spin up some pretty interesting prototypes just by describing what they want. It's not production ready, but it's a really interesting way to explore new ideas and quite powerful. So I'm thinking that there could even possibly be a plugin creator that comes out in 2026. Uh, plugin creation in 2026 might be DSP and raw C++, using Clap as the main plugin format, then wrapping into the other formats. UI in some sort of web framework like Svelte, then using shader-based animations. Uh, all built using AI assisted coding and then delivered to desktop, then compiled to Wasm for use in the browser. It's all still audio development, but it's not one language anymore. It's not one framework and it's not even one paradigm. It's becoming a multidisciplinary craft and I expect to see this explode in 2026 with some amazing creative possibilities. My third prediction is that indie plugins will become even more personality driven and expressive. We'll see more plugins that feel handcrafted have a bold aesthetic, take creative risks, do one unique thing extremely well, and express the creator's taste and perspective. In this world where AI can generate generic, good enough versions of just about anything, the value now shifts to the stuff AI can't replicate. Taste, personality, experience. The era of the creative plugin developer is just beginning. So what does this mean for you as a creator? Well. If you're a developer, it's time to lean into your strengths. If you're light on experience, have a look at some of the tools that I mentioned earlier and try to get good 
at just a select few. You don't need to be good at everything. Use the learning resources out there. Be creative, be adaptable. The bar has risen. Companies aren't just looking for someone who can build a plugin anymore. They're looking for developers who can learn new things quickly, who can navigate this fragmenting tool chain and bring something beyond just technical competence. Well, at least that's what I look for. And if you're building products, you have two strong paths. One, go big. Flagship level instruments and effects. Deep long-term development. Category defining. Build loyalty through free upgrades and genuine relationships with your users. Two, go bold. Opinionated, personality driven, the kind of idea that only you would make. Don't try to please everyone. Solve something specific. Say something through your product. So those are my three observations from 2025, my predictions for 2026 and beyond, and what I think it means for anyone building or creating in this space. It's certainly been a spicy year, but also an exciting one. The creators who are going to win aren't the ones waiting to see what happens. They're already experimenting already connecting, already building things that only they could make. And remember, in a world where AI can generate the average, the premium is on the authentic. Let me know in the comments what you've observed this year, what trends you're seeing, and what you're excited or worried about heading into 2026. Happy coding, keep building, and I'll see you on the next one.